Last time on Square Roots, Tabin finally meets his destiny and transforms into the Dragon King, but in a startling twist, he chooses to use his newfound power for evil. Meanwhile, Grouse is determined to capture the dragon for his dark carnival, Meg and Sebastian find love in a hopeless place, and FutureBot2000 is back with a startling revelation. Domo arigato, future roboto! Square Roots Podcast. My name is Matthew Van Zant, and I'm joined by Jonathan Brandon. That is not my name. <laughs> Prove that to me in a court of law, sir. I mean, and I've got government ID. I can show you that. I got my birth certificate. Stanley Ferguson. My name is indeed Stanley. Uh, However, no, it is not. It's Stephen. I go by Stone. <laughs> stone. Yes. Mm. Uh, he was Stan, he became Stephen, then Stanley, <laughs> then Steve Lee, then Stone. Stone. Stone, Stone Ferguson. Ooh. Stone Ferguson. Yeah. Stone, you're like a special guest host this uh, this time, huh? How's that going for you? It, it's going great. Uh, unfortunately, I, I see the end in sight. I'm just going to miss you guys so much. It's going to be so hard to <laughs> say goodbye <laughs> to yesterday. To yesterday. <laughs> anyway, this is the uh, Square Roots, the classic RPG podcast. We play your favorite classic RPGs one chonker at a time, and then we, uh, you know, talk about it. I have never like, heard uh, that song before in my life. <laughs> really? No. I don't know how that's possible. You need to watch the movie Cooley High, my friend, because that's where it originated. What is Cooley that? Cooley High? Cooley that's High not a is. Thing. Yes, it is, and it's got this amazing Motown soundtrack too. It's what it's the movie is the basis of the name of the Boys to Men album Cooley High Harmony. But yeah, Cooley High is a great movie. Check it out. Mm. All right, I'm going to add that to my queue. And hit play. Listeners, we'll be back in about two hours. That's a long album. <laughs> well, it's, a team, it's, a, it's a movie, not an album. It's the MGM line. Oh, okay. So yeah. uh, uh, it's like a like a let's play for your ears? Yeah, like a book club, but for video games, but mm. that you listen to and participate in in a separate format, which is, you know, like the Facebook group. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because here it's really just kind of the three of us. Or, or Twitter. the Patreon. Or the Patreon. Or emails. Or Twitter. Apparently one of us did good on Twitter today. It certainly wasn't me. It was me. (laughs) I was going to tag Vanessa, but then I was like, wait, but did she or was it John? (laughs) Vanessa hasn't been on the Twitter in like a month. She's on vacation. (laughs) She's worse at Twitter than I am, and I fucking don't use Twitter at all because I hate that garbage site. She's uh, on (gasps) location in Botswana doing research about gorillas. The band. Because they're very popular there. Before we go off on another tangent, uh, let's see. What are we supposed to do first? Ooh, we should talk about how we leveled up this week before we get into the meat of this show. Mm. So who wants to go first? Show of hands. Stan. Yeah. Stan Anthony? Stone? Steve? Yeah. Stone. S- Steve Stone. Stone Lee? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, <And> Steve Stone. <laughs> I his alter ego rock man. <laughs> I leveled up this week by purchasing a new litter box for my cats. Ooh. Yeah, it's nothing fancy, oh. but it's useful. It's uh it's this uh, Arm and Hammer brand uh thing that you kind of stack. It's really two litter boxes that stack on top of each other and then there's a little filter in between. So mm. once you're done with the one that has litter on it, you pour it on top of the filter. Then you sift the filter so that you get the clean litter in the next one. And then you uh, toss the dirty stuff in the filter into a trash bag. And mm-hmm. it's that simple. Because mm-hmm. I am very bad at cleaning litter boxes. 
How can you be bad at it? It's just using well, a little scoopy. It's not that I'm necessarily bad at it. It's just that I'm not uh, as uh, you lazy and you don't do it as often as you should. Just come out and say it. So um, how, well, how that's many one times way a of week would you it. say you've been doing this? Uh, in before this new litter box, yeah, uh, once a week. Oh, and is that um, a once a week? No, it's once a week. I what I do, what I do is they like they're really good at burying their poops and their peas. Mm-hmm. So oh, I just boy. pour a Where layer. Where is this conversation going? <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's what I get for checking Facebook. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just nudge you off of this. Uh, so you got a new litter box. That's pretty cool, Stan. I guess you didn't want to go yeah. for one of those motorized ones. Then it's not a robot. No, one. I can't. I always I wanted one of those it. when I had a cat. I have a suggestion for you both, actually, mm-hmm. uh, to combat this problem of cleaning out cat boxes. Don't own a cat. I love my mm. cat. And I wouldn't want to have a dog and then have to pick up their poops outside. That's I've gross. Gotten they this, have big poops. Just don't have a pet. Giant uh, corner one, uh, and I clean it twice a week, and that seems to be enough. And I put in lot. It's like super deep, so I can put in lots and lots of litter. Yeah, my my first one was super deep as well, but like I just let it go on too long, and now it's really hard to scoop like the whole bottom of it because it's like earth now. Uh, <laughs> oh no! What no? Okay, first of all, you need to change your brand of litter. No, the litter is great. It's just that it clumped too well. And there was just too much. That's like a – that's several weeks worth of peeps right there. Anyway, no, Matthew No, no, because we're talking about two cats. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, John is disgusted. Stan, anything else you want to add that's not litter box related? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I had a nice Christmas. I spent the New Year's Day with my family. Uh, saw my niece and nephew and uh, my brother. And we just uh, had a had a good time, and I got a BB-8. Matthew, tell me, Uh-oh. how did you level up, my friend? I've got a real fresh one in my mind about that I just that I just experienced, and mm-hmm. I can talk about about how fresh, I learned all about litter boxes. Fresh poop, and more. <laughs> <laughs> Please more scoop info. out the uh, the mind poops and peeps of your thoughts right. and uh, present so, them to our trash bag of an audience. <laughs> <laughs> this is the poop cast. <laughs> Uh, how did I level up? Uh, it's been an exciting. It's been. <laughs> it's been an exciting uh, week. You know, which today's the second, I believe. Yeah, it's since you tossed your head to the side and said you're angry. Huh? I guess I haven't been up to much. I watched that Netflix, The Bandersnatch, and it was okay. Yeah. Did anybody else watch that? Nope, no, not yet. No, it's like a choose your own adventure. Choose your own adventure. You know, it's fun. Um, kind of, you know, I don't know. It's worth, the, it's worth doing. I had fun with it for. Did you get the good ending? I don't even know what the good ending is. Who knows? <laughs> I saw a bunch of endings. It kind of leads you by the nose and lets you see everything towards the end, or not everything, but. So I don't know. I kind of just got tired of it and turned it off after about an hour and a half. It was fine. Uh, so, but I don't want to say too much because John hasn't seen it yet. Um, yeah, uh, and you know, good Christmas, good New Year. Glad to have the New Year started. It's get the year a cool of no present? sequels, huh? Did you get a cool present for New Year's for Christmas? Did are you asking me if I got any New Year's presents? Well, did, no, I, no one's no, asking that. But, I, if, did you? Did you get a cool New <laughs> well, Year's present? Well, in fact, <laughs> I did. I sat around on New Year's Eve and taught my kids how to play poker. So that was fun. Oh, that is fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, you know, I don't have a lot going on right now. It's been a busy holiday season and I don't have much exciting to talk about, so I'll just leave it with Bandersnatch. Uh, John, how did you level up? Well, uh, I, I played some two player Smash Brothers Ooh. and that was really fun. I with played who? it with my brother ah. and that was entertaining. And I played it with uh, my friend Alex and that was fun ah. too. And, That's- uh, I, got, uh, I, Alex had the, the GameCube adapter. So I played it on a real GameCube controller 
And that uh-huh. game's a lot better with a GameCube controller. It's just... Is it better... Have you tried it with a Pro controller? Uh, yeah. Well, I've got, like, um, an off-brand Pro controller, but it, it's fine for every other game, but the button layout, the at least the initial one sucks. Uh, the thing is, the GameCube controller is the best controller. That's no, it's why... really not. I don't like that controller otherwise. <laughs> yeah, I, I love don't it. like that it's controller. It's a bad controller, but it's good for Smash Brothers. It's great I for Smash Brothers. I just have always felt like that's like an urban legend or something. No, but like, it, it really is it works really, really best well. For, like a modern Smash Brothers game, does it really work better than the old classic two analog sticks and Maybe an it's muscle ABXY memory. or whatever? It could be yeah, muscle memory. Yeah, because it was memory. designed for it. Uh, but I, I, I am much better. It. Like I, ca- I chose Game and Watch. I was playing on mm-hmm. the GameCube, and I was like, "Bam, bam, bam!" Hit you with some bacon. Down key fa- into your face, and then ringing my bell after I, I smashed you out of the ring or stage. You got to ring the bell. You got to taunt. I also, um, I've been playing cool. more Monster Boy. Uh, Julian oh. Titus helped me get past uh, an area I was stuck in, and the reason uh-huh. I was stuck was because I didn't have the the metroid ability to go up that area yet. But the game doesn't really telegraph it well. I just thought, like, I could jump to get a, a cr- uh, around it, but you can't. Ah. Mm. And, uh, I... So you needed to go somewhere else entirely. Yes. Yes, that was the problem. Because there are these <laughs> fans, and it's like you can sort of jump to avoid the first fan, but then it gets more complicated with the second one. So it's like, oh, I'm really... This is really hard. But you just need some boots. You just need some boots mm. that you get when you change into... um. A dragon? Sexy boots. Uh, no, a frog. A frog man. Uh, I also, um, on my I way really home... I really am interested in that game. I want to play it very bad. It's uh, definitely on my list. The rental agency, instead of giving me the Spark or similar I ordered when I was visiting my family in Ottawa, gave me a Chrysler 300C Sport with like 20-inch wheels, leather interior. Nice. And, uh, that car, and it had uh, summer tires on? Oh, no. That's and not good. it's Ottawa in December. <laughs> so yeah. It was really bad. That car was dangerous to drive. Were you slipping in a sliding? I couldn't go up my mom's driveway. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So uh, I had to take it real slow in that car. So, uh, like, the rent, the car rental agencies don't have, like, dog sleds that you can get? <laughs> no, no. Surprisingly, <laughs> yeah. no. You can't travel by moose up there? <laughs> oh, wait, you're like a fucking communist socialist nation. Don't you have trains crisscrossing the nation? Isn't I, that how you control the means of production, you fucking communists? Yikes. I, I also, so anyway, when I was dropping off the car, I had to walk home, and I was like, USA, I walked USA. past uh, Best Buy, and I was like, oh, I'm going to go check in that Best Buy. And there was, like, the whole Switch section had been ransacked, and there's, like, three games left. Oh, but no. One was a beautiful sealed copy of Bayonetta 1 and 2. <gasps> How oh much? Boy. Um cuz I know you were lot. trying to get it for like you real sucker. cheap. $79? Oh, well, <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that bad i mean <laughs> i shouldn't have spent that money but um <laughs> i did get it and i've been wanting to get it for a while and uh, it's really fun and uh bayonetta is a great game i didn't i kind of bounced off it the first time i i got it like for 360 but this time i've really been in the mood and it works really well on switch and it's got so many sega references and this time you can also like change bayonetta into samus or link or Peach or Daisy, and each one has like a different set of moves. It's really neat. That's amazing. And <laughs> I'm really surprised that Nintendo let her wear these super sexy outfits. Like her Peach outfit's like got a thong that's that's uh, hugging her labia. What? <laughs> her Daisy outfit. Yeah, her Daisy outfit really shows off a lot of her anatomy. That's not. Yuck. <laughs> Girls are gross. It's fine. It's it's cool. And, <laughs> and like Bayonetta was designed by a woman. That's why I give that game a whole lot of benefit of the doubt when it comes to the perviness of the character. Because I think I think she's super cool. And I really like how not giving a crap she is in uh-huh. the game. She's really fun. And does she uh, use a bayonet? Uh no. She has well, guns. Why is she called on her Bayonetta? Shoes. Is she married to a bayonet? Is that why she's Miss Bayonetta? I, I don't think so. But she's a witch, and she's got time powers, and she's really fun, and her outfit's so, made of hair. And the better you do in a combo, the her, the more of her outfit goes away. 
So no knives on those guns. No. They the shoes have guns on them. The shoes have guns on them, but they don't yeah. have they don't they don't have knives. No. There are no bayonets. That sounds like that sounds like a game just not for me. It's yeah, it's, it's not pretty named very silly. well. I would expect a whole lot of bayonets. Nope. Nope. It's just a lot of zaniness. Anyway, uh so I've been playing that and Monster Boy and Smash Brothers, and that is my level up. Nice. All right, well then, if we're all done leveling up, mm. Stan, are you sure you're done talking about poops and poops? I can go <laughs> on and on about litter boxes, my friend. Well, instead of that, why don't we step into the confessional? The confessional. Ooh, the confessional. Ah. The confessional. I confess that I use fresh for life litter, multi cat version, that has a hard clumping that never turns into no, earth at the bottom. No, this is where we talk about the game. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's time to talk about Dragon Quest V. Guys, this game is starting to drag. Again. Drag? What are you talking about? This is like all plot all the time. Ugh, I know, but it's like dumb plot. Uh, well, I mean, it's a JRPG. What do you expect? Hey, I don't know. <laughs> So we left and as far off, as JRPGs yes. go, this isn't that bad. We left off with our protagonist and his wife uh, turned to stone. And mm. one statue was taken away by a guy who wanted to have sexual intercourse with it. Yes. And that only gets worse. <laughs> but first, we start off with Prince Albert. And he is telling everyone to track you down. In a can. Well, we already did that joke last time. We did. I know. I'm referencing with that his, fucking and then, joke. With his then, piercing gaze. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so they they send he sends out people to look for you in, in Sancho uh, comforts both snout and grot snot and grout. And it's very moving. I was moved. Did you were you guys moved when Sancho Cal- you know, calmed your little babies. I don't remember this scene happening. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I don't, I don't want to read it. <laughs> Is it going to make uh, you yeah. cry? No. Yeah it's it's going to be it's going to make me cry. Let's just say he says, "East no need to cry, snot. East no <laughs> need for your tears, grout." And <laughs> he says, and this is the part that that really that really got my heart. He says, "Your madre and papa." They be home as soon. They're Aww. there. He's okay. <laughs> and um, and it's like, oh, but we know better. We know they won't be home as soon. They won't be home as soon at all. Because right now, they're <laughs> with Huckster and Heister, and they're at an auction. I don't even know why they put Bianca up for auction, because... Heister just wants to make out with her. Yeah. But they sold me for $20,000. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a like pretty good deal. To Mr. I mean, yeah, Porgy. Maybe he, thinks, maybe he thinks he can sell Deborah for more. <laughs> no, I don't think he's planning on selling Deborah, Bianca, or Nira. It's, uh, it's pretty gross. I mean, let's see here. He, when, when Huckster asks him, he goes... And hey, bruv, what about the other statue? Aren't you selling that one and all? Is he Heister- LG? No, what's weird is that he has that accent, but Heister doesn't. And Heister is his, presumably his brother. And Heister says, nah, <laughs> I got me own plans for that beauty. <laughs> <laughs> so what? let's be honest here. It's a statue. He's not going to fuck it. So what's he going to just jerk off looking at it? Probably. I mean, is that the plan? Probably. Fr- there's frottage. Come on. What? Frottage. I think that's a type of food in mm-hmm. Quebec. 
Yeah, it's it's uh, made when you uh, curdle cheese. Oh. I don't. I don't like that. <laughs> Come on with you. Shut Let's, up. Uh, so, okay, so this is you the get- gross episode. <laughs> <laughs> Mister, volunteer to be in a gross episode. <laughs> Speaking of gross, anyway, burp, burp, fart, fart. My butt, my butt. <laughs> you get taken to Mister Porky's house. Yeah, he's like. Well, now that I'm here with my wife, I want a lot of good luck, and this statue looks real lucky, so let's do it. Yeah. And you get introduced to his – Mr. Porgy's son, Georgie. And I, Eventually, so I think well, that- first he is – it's just him and his wife, and then his wife gets knocked up, and then his wife has that kid. Yeah, and um, it's weird because there's never any pudding pies, but whatever. Well, don't so- – I think she mentions a pie. I think the mom uh, does mentions- she. I thought so. I thought there was mention of pie. Uh, maybe. I'm scrolling through my screenshots where I took every single bit of dialogue. Mm. Uh, so I'm not going to go back to see if they say anything about pie. Um, but, yeah, you you as a statue kind of watch the Porgy family over the years mm-hmm. uh, as Porgy grows up. And then one day he's playing outside. I guess he's about four or five years old. And two winged monsters come and kidnap him and knock his mom to the ground. Oh. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. They just knock his mom to the ground and then this fly off. This shit is just fucking bizarre. What Georgie. has any of this got to do with anything? Well, well isn't that sh- she killed, basically? No, She's- no, no. She he, she gets back up when Mr. Porgy comes home. And right. he goes like, oh, he's say, whatever was all that hoo-ha about? And yeah. Miss Por- what Mrs. about them hoo haws? <laughs> Mrs. Porgy tells him that Georgie was stolen, and then you find out a month has gone by. And there's some a really named- nice. I think this is second to the springtime arriving effect. Well, this is all still before that. That's the oh, crazy oh, thing. Sorry. It's like you're watching this family do all this shit, and yeah. then like after pudding comes over, and Mr. Porgy gets pissed off at you not bringing him good luck, and he knocks you over. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, he, you then are knocked down on the ground and Wait, you see this pudding? little, there's a guy named Pudding. Yeah. So uh, isn't that like Pudding? That's part of the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Pudding And pie. the Pudding looks like he's from hay. So. Mm. What is, why are we piecing together these fucking puns? We have to. <laughs> it's are doing so much work to put together some puns so that aren't good. Demand After a year this. of seasons pass. Yeah, uh, I, you, I really like this effect. The, the it was a beautiful animation. Really beautiful. It really it, was a pretty animation. But yeah. immediately after the screen goes black, it says, and so the days and years passed. Motherfucker, I know years passed. I saw a kid grow up. Mm-hmm. And then after that, Sancho shows up with uh, your two children. Uh, your, your daughter, Grout, uh, resurrects you after... Mr. Porgy gives you away for free. Uh, Sancho offers to pay for him, but he thinks you're worthless. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Grout brings you back to life and, um, and then you're told, I mean, basically it's like you are told that your son is the legendary hero and <laughs> bum, no bum, one bum. gives a shit. It's like <laughs> not a big deal. Yeah, it's like he's a throwaway like, line. He's like, "Dad, turns out I can like use the armor and shield and stuff. I'm yeah. a legendary hero after all, huh?" Yeah. I, he doesn't even say I'm a legendary hero. He just says, uh, "You know the Zenithian sword you left behind? I can equip myself with it." Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> it's weird to hear JRPG characters talk like in their native uh, language. I equip myself with items. <laughs> <laughs> I need to equip myself with this rod before I can open this door. Yeah, I should talk like that. I'll reach into my inventory. (laughs) Is this your sex talk, Matthew? (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. (laughs) Stop it, Matthew. You're turning me on. It was not successful. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, uh, yep, your son's the legendary hero, and you have been returned to life. Uh, Despite the fact that it felt like about a hundred years passed, um, your kids seem to be four years old. I think they're six. No, they're eight. They're They're eight. Eight Eight years have passed while you were in stone. While you were stoned. I was so stoned. Stoned daddy, baby. 
Boom, mm-hmm. boom, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. I'm your stoned daddy. <laughs> Papa was a rolling stone. Yeah. <laughs> Papa was a rolling stoned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you go back to Gotha and everyone takes care of you and a whole, I, I can't begin to tell you how we have not played this game at all. All this is just cut scenes and people talking mm-hmm. and snot and grout tell you that they're going to be hanging out with you from now on. Um, and then, so, then your uncle comes along and he's dressed just like the chancellor and looks exactly like the chancellor. Oh no. <laughs> but he's Chancellor's like, bad news. Well, he says something weird. He goes, I say, you don't mean to say you've forgotten who I am, do you? It's me, Bertie. You're old. Oh, wait. Bertie is is a nickname for Uncle Albert. Yeah. I'm a f- I'm an idiot. That's true. Yeah. You are an idiot. God, I'm disappointed in you, Stanton. <sighs> Fine. Yeah. I'm so sorry, guys. I'll just I'll just get up and go no, here. No, so no. You, you headed to Gotha. And what happens? the wall. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Don't Jesus. do that. It's a waste of a good wall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you um <clears throat> you do things. Uh you t- fucking Prince Albert keeps talking. Oh, mm-hmm. he says the most important thing that you need to know. They found your mother's birthplace. Why they didn't know it before, who gives a shit? But they found it. <laughs> and uh and they say it's uh what they they, they found it. Peak. They say Pinkras wasn't peak. popular there. No, does he even say it's Lofty Peak? Uh, I think so. Oh no, he shows you where it is on a map. Oh, and that's okay. it. So he's like, "Go there," and I'm like, "Okay." Then Sancho's like, "I can join your party," and I was like, "That's great, Sancho. Bye." <laughs> yeah, this opens up the second weird character collection dynamic, the uh, uh, Patty's Party Planner. Now, you actually did this, didn't you, John? I did. I did not. They, I had Mohicat. I had my kids. What else did I need? Not Sancho. Sancho. I invited Sancho to come traveling with me so he could comment on everything along with the kids. <laughs> and what did Sancho have to say? He wants to have sex with Bianca. Oh, that's what? nice. Isn't that his daughter? Well, What's no. happening? But he does have wa- <sighs> want to have sex with Bianca. That's gross. Because he sees her and, he, and afterwards you press the talk button. He's like, oh, Wait, that- when do you run into Bianca? Uh, when you, it, well, for me, when I went back to uh, Stock and Barrel. So she's still there? Yeah. She's there helping out her dad and kind of just missed out on life. Wait, her dad, who was dying eight years ago, is yeah, still alive? Yep, yeah, she's taking care of him. Oh, Jesus. What an asshole. I got mm-hmm. married to her because of him. It was his dying wish. <laughs> <laughs> he lied. That's yeah, the second time in the game that he's, has an, isn't it, that he's lied about dying? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, um, at this point, uh, did you, did any of you, because there's also a, a soldier you can recruit in the castle. Oh, yeah? Uh, I didn't do any of this. Are they worth getting? Sancho's fine. Uh, I got a staff of sanctuary that I gave him, and he was mm-hmm. just, I, I, I sent everyone to fight wisely most of the time because they didn't want to hit buttons. And he mm-hmm. was just healing people every round with that staff, and that staff seemed to have unlimited uses, so it was really useful. Mm, cool. That's cool. I'll have I to used to see my, if I have that. I used my boy for healing. He was a pretty good healer. Boy. Boy. Heal, heal me, boy. <laughs> so I I did make a stop to visit King Wilbur and Prince Harry. Mm-hmm. And Prince Harry has a kid named Kendrick who's a little shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like mm-hmm. Harry was when he was little. Yes. So he tries to pull the same damn prank on you. Yeah. Uh, with the lackey thing. He, uh it's like he's exactly the same as Harry is when he was little. Well, he doesn't pull the trick on you. It's basically you and Harry are going to hang out and they're like, oh, you let the kids play together. And your kids come back and they're like, Harry disappeared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you go and you find the stairs. Or and Kendrick. Kendrick. And they, they pull the same trick with Kendrick. You go mm-hmm. down to Kendrick and he was like, oh, that's no fun. I bet you and didn't find the lackey's scolded. badge, though. He got no, no. scolded. Then you hear the knock on the door. 
And Kendrick's like, hmm? But instead of kidnappers, it's the Chancellor. And he's like, I do hope you're not causing trouble again. Yeah. So he gets scolded. God, this. And then you get, you go upstairs and you get a Hermes helmet. And that's it. it it's pointless. That her- um, helmet's good. I like that helmet. Yeah. I didn't try it. I don't know what it does. I just used it on uh, the lady girl. Maybe I did. I think I gave it to my girl. Yeah. Uh, then I visited Francophobe at the, at the, uh, at the bridge and he's still there. And, and Kendrick I mean, I was a, putting rats on people's heads this time yeah, instead of yeah, frogs. instead of frogs, it was rats. And I was like, what a piece of shit. I hate and, these people. You guys spent way too much time with all of these fucking idiot characters. You're just supposed to run in and get whatever treasure they're going to give you and run out. Yeah, I mean, the important thing was visiting Cleopatra, but... I went to Bianca's house. This is when uh, Sancho had this weird latent attraction to a girl he knew since she was a little baby. Mm-hmm. And uh, then in the back... That by a chest, there's a monster that's just hanging out there. Oh dear! You can fight. It's one of them hooded helmsman type guys. Oh, uh, like Robin Hood. Yeah, and you just—he's real easy. You fight him, and then okay. Stan's like, "Oh, you should try going to Monstro Pharaoh mm-hmm. and uh, uh, do the the, the so- side quest for Mister Biscotti." Oh God! Uh, uh, that's not that. I'm level twenty five. I was not high enough level for that. Yeah, I'm level 28, and I was not high enough level. I, my kids were level 25 when I faced it again, mm. and it, I wasn't high enough level. I cast Hocus Pocus and turned into a dragon and oh, still wow. couldn't beat him. So yeah, it was the, weird. The fact recommends you're level 30 plus. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Do you even have to get that high to finish this fucking game? Nope. He's like nope, an optional side quest boss. I feel like we're pretty close to the end of this game. We are. Yeah, I actually am, have hit a point where I'm going to have to go grind a little bit because the it, it, random encounters in dungeons are too hard. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, there's a steep uh, difficulty with the, the the last area that we got to in this game. But uh, before we get there, we have to go to Helmanaptra and grab the uh, the helmet. The so there's a Zenithian sword, helmet, and shield, right? Is there armor? Yeah, what happened to the yeah, armor? Yeah, there's armor. You can't get it yet, though. You have to oh, get the key that opens okay. every door. Oh. Um, is that what you, isn't that what you get from beating the Briscaletti quest or whatever? The key, yeah. You get that key. Oh, really? That's what that, that that's what you get for beating the monster? Yeah. Okay. The so, ultimate key or whatever? So one thing yeah. I noticed uh, on the world map, after you get turned to stone... Um, the enemies are much, much, much harder, and I, I had a, a problem for the first, like, hour or so of just getting killed by random encounters. I didn't that have sucks. that issue, like, at all. Weird. Yeah, neither did I. Like, huh. yeah, everything was its normal level. Um, I will run from a fight that has too many monsters that look high level, though. Like, I flee a lot in this game. <laughs> I've never. Fleed. I just don't want to fucking deal with it. Like I, I just don't have the patience. It's a for it. chance the combat to grind. is not very good. It takes a long time. If somebody dies, it's a huge pain in the fucking ass, and I don't want to deal with it. Uh, there's certain enemies that I know that aren't worth the time, and I'll flee those. But most of the time, especially since I got the dragon blade, uh, it's it's like no problem. The dragon staff. No, not the. Was it? I don't know. The one you I find in the tower. Yeah, there's like a dragon blade that I had, and then there's the dragon staff. They both do oh. uh, incredible damage to dragons. I don't have the dragon blade. Yeah, I bought it over in. Oh, um, oh if you go back to Wheel Brook, mm-hmm. uh, there's a guy there that sells like the best weapons in the game oh. outside of uh, okay, the metals. I'll go do that. Yeah. So Cleohatra is the only one who gives a shit about your son being the legendary hero. Mm hmm. She says, the legendary hero is here at last. Oh, great one, Wayne Gretzky. The world needs you. <laughs> Only you can fight the plague of darkness that curses us. And I figured out why they call it Helmet Patra, at least. Helmet Patra. Oh, yeah? Why is because that? she has a helmet. Because she has the helmet. Oh, that's like I think Cleopatra. we talked about that. Yeah, it's pretty. Mm, okay. I mean, there's not really much to figure out. That's literally I'm what it says. very smart. <laughs> yeah. Well, she announces it to her people, all two of them, that uh, the the hero has arrived. And yeah, that's when I went and did wasted my time with the Briscoletti thing and, and got killed. But it was cool to see the monster come out. Yeah, you that know, thing's you, go, pretty you neat. check that 
you check that jar to see if it's still blue, but now it's red. And you like you kind of wonder if something's up with Mr. Briscoletti because the wife is worried about him and says he's been acting weird since a merchant came by. I don't know what that was all about. And you find out if you read the diary behind him that there's like a family heritage of like sealing up this monster that could end the world. Uh, but it can only be sealed for 150 years. So eventually someone's family is going to have to deal with it. Yeah. The only, the only thing I really liked out of, I mean, aside from watching that monster climb out and walk up, it was, that was a really cool little animation was visiting Deborah again. I I couldn't find Nira, but uh, Deborah, you know, said, uh, you know, why didn't she get married? She, that she says, a husband would just get under my feet like you are at the moment, really. Do you mind? Oh, and in another universe, Deborah, you loved me. Oh, did she? Did she? Well, who knows? Because your wife is missing and never shows up during this little chunker. So, yeah, that's true. Um, so we go to Lofty Peak eventually. Yeah. Now Go here's where cave. I think I didn't do something and something that the guide says will happen doesn't happen. What's that? Well, apparently there's a guy who gives you a saf- a stone that has turned into a sapphire, but I guess yeah, I never gave I him that. that stone. No, you have to have the Wheelbrook stone with you that you got from Wheelbrook. You get that from climbing inside the well in the beginning of the game. Yeah, I thought I got that stone, but I don't think I ever gave it to him. Or do you give it to him there? Oh, no, you, you give it to him then and there at Lofty Peak. Oh, Pete. maybe I have to have it like in my inventory or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, you do have to do that. But, yeah, um, I had the Wheelbrook Stone. I handed it. He he recognizes it. You hand it over. You sleep for a night. And then he gives you back a Wheelbrook Sapphire. And it's a knickknack. Getting to Lofty Peak is a bit of a challenge because you need a boat. You got to f- go through this boat maze. Yeah. Fight some aquatic monsters. Yeah. And yeah, you get there and it's like this super isolated town where you assume everyone's been marrying each other because there's only like 15 people there. And it's really three dimensional. And yeah, this is kind of neat. You have to spin the camera around to walk around it. I wonder how this looked on the Super Famicom because, yeah, there's like houses on, it's like uh, a, a mountain and there's houses wrapped around the mountain. You can kind of go in and out of passages. It's pretty fun. Uh, I can't imagine that Lofty Peak looked uh, all that interesting on on Super Famicom. It's, it's, I think this is this is an invention entirely from um, for the DS. I guess you could have had like cutaways to different angles as you walk around it. Uh, I guess, but I don't know. I mm. gotta feel. I have you looked up. The Dragon Quest V graphics on Super Famicom? It still looks better than Final Fantasy IV, I would say. You think so? A little. It, no. The Final Fantasy IV's map even looks better. Okay. I find the map screens pretty hideous. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> you, you go there. You walk around. Uh, there's a lot of people who talk to you about stuff and things. Uh, about how your dad came by and romanced... Uh, what was her name? <laughs> Mara Dean... Mara, I don't know. Mada, Mada, Madison. No, yeah. not Madison. Mada, not Madison Madison was what the, he wanted to name you in the beginning of the game. Yeah, Madalena. Or- Madalena, and I don't know. Uh, no one liked your dad because <laughs> they Madalena. took away a lady from there, and they they have like some ancient connection to the Zenithians. Yeah, but they've all lost their powers, and you got to talk to the four elders and the uh, Madalena. Yeah. So yeah. you go talk to the four elders and they're like, hey, Stan, we don't blame you for your dad being an asshole. Um, but we need to tell you, you need to save your mom because your mom had the ability to travel between uh, the three planes, the three planes being Zenithia, the realm of the holy ones, the earth world where everyone lives and Nadiria, the underworld. And that's where the goddess sealed away the demons and now the demons have somehow gotten here uh, so that your mom can open up the gates of the underworld. But how sure. did they get here to begin with? Who knows? Mm, 
Yeah, maybe it's one of those time travel things. Anyway, the ancient power was strong in your mother. Uh, and you got to go and save her. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much it. Oh, you have to, they tell you, I think you need to go to the Zenithian Tower. Or no longer can we open the gates even of the Eastern Estuary Sanctuary and the Watery Corridor where north of here. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that There's that gate. That you can't open. It's covered by the, rocks. Uh, yeah. So you have to find a key and you have to find a magic carpet. Yay. Yeah, and you find the are, key in the magic carpet. I, they, this game is so town. freaking confusing at this point because you don't really know where to go. Um, but you go to the, yeah, you get the key in the magic carpet. The magic carpet doesn't actually fly. It only allows you to go over obstacles on the main map. I mean, it can show you the world. Shimmer. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Something splendid. Tell me, Stephen, when did you last let your heart decide? Oh, I'm sure you want to go down this rabbit hole, John? Because uh, <laughs> I were specifically remember a couple of years ago you having the music from Aladdin stuck in your head for so long that you were literally starting to go insane. And yeah, it was like it does, the thing you hated most in the world. It does make me go insane. <laughs> but I've got a whole new horizons to pursue. And I'll yes. chase them Anywhere there's time to spare. Okay, no, stop, stop, Let me stop, no, share no, no, this no, no. whole new world with you. <laughs> stop it, you. stop it. <laughs> All right, so you arrive. So you uh, it basically now you can get across this river, so you can go to the Zenithian Tower. And yeah. you get into the Zenithian Tower. And it's and super boring. Yeah. This one's you, not a it's not a great level. Nope. <laughs> um I think that I got through the Zenithian Tower without a single fight. How? You can. It's not that hard. I don't I don't know. It was weird. The, the whole time I was like, why am I not getting in fights? I got, I got in like lots four or fights. five fights. I didn't get in many either. I pretty much got in a few fights. Uh, a couple times I think I fell because I was exploring a whole bunch. It was early in the week. And then you find the old man at the top, and he's like, here's a staff. And he tells you to go blow up the uh, the entrance to the, to another cave. So then you go to the other cave. This and really feels like a Nintendo game. Like, this feels like an 8-bit RPG at this point. Like, <laughs> it's very light on story. Although, I do like that every person you talk to, now I can get a response from the boy... I get a response from the girl and a response from Sancho about their yeah. thoughts on that character. And that's pretty fun. Really? Yeah, they write I didn't know that. a I, lot of dialogue. <laughs> I technically can do that, but every time I hit it, it's Mohicat that responds. Oh, I leave him out of the party. It's just <laughs> girl, boy, Sancho. Uh, if only Snot and Grout would talk to me. Aw, they talk to me yeah. plenty. Yeah. I got a feeling that when they get older, they won't even call me anymore. Ah, Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not a good dad. So we go to that cave and we, you, and Grout, at least for me, Grout blew it open. Mm -hmm. And you go into the cave and this was kind of fun for me. I like the little cart puzzles. Uh, yeah, I mean, it wasn't hard. You could just see, like, okay, I want to go there. Well, did you solve the cart puzzles on your own or did you use a fact? I, I solved them on my own because I like screwed up the instructions the fact gave me, so I had to. <laughs> I'm using um, first of all, all, I can't find any good walkthroughs for this. They're all like game fact facts, which are terrible and impossible for me to follow. Number one and number two, I am using the Prima Guide, and it is not very. Hel- it is helpful, but it's also just like shittily laid out and arranged. And I can I always have a hard time locating. Simple information like what important place do I need to go to next? <laughs> Sometimes it feels like I'm reading like a cooking blog. There's like so much fucking information in front of the like four fucking th- words that I need to read. Have you not been using the IGN one that uh, John and yeah, I have been using? That's the one I'm using. No. Yeah, oh. it it skips all the cutscene information. Just tells you exactly what you need to go, where you need to go, and what you need to get. Yeah. Well, I'll look for that. Thank you. Uh, it's, my, it's my Ritz Carlton pleasure there, Matthew. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so <laughs> you find a guy who is trapped on a minecart that's going in circles. Yes. This was fun. 
And you, I tried to go walk in front of him to stop him, but it didn't work. What I did happens? too. Nothing. He just goes Nothing. through you. Oh. Just pushes you out of the way. But yeah, you, you do that thing and he flies out and you find Ned Flanders. <laughs> he does say diddly a lot. Oh yeah. I know you know he's a Ned Flanders reference, despite the fact that his name is Dr. Aegon. The Dr. most subtle names Aegon. is hmm. Dr. Acula. <laughs> <laughs> or or Alucard. <laughs> Alucard is more <laughs> subtle than Dr. Aegon. But uh, so Dr. Aegon, uh, he is Ned Flanders. I mean, uh, yeah, this is a real interesting choice for a character to drop in the middle of this game. He's like got he looks to me like a magician, like <laughs> an old timey magician, like Harry Houdini. He's the bartender he spray and oodly doodly a lot and he, such and he so on. It's really me of, obnoxious. Um, Paul F. Tompkins. I guess. I mean, his name is Doctor Aegon, so clearly he's a good guy. Yeah, he is. Um, he's he is just the. Guy. He's the bartender sprite. Yeah, he's like in every town behind the bar. T- you know, <laughs> I've been it's, going in circles for twenty years, twenty yeah. diddly years. I yeah, he goes, it. silly old me, just climbed aboard that thing without so much as a should I diddly shouldn't I? And that was twenty years ago. And we cannot do a Flanders. Wait, uh, he's got wait. more. Of a, I guess. 20 Did diddly years ago. No, nope, it's too high. Nope. He hmm. got I'm not on the try. cart out. and went around in circles for 20 years. But this does get commented upon. Like, uh, when later stuff happens, the kids are like, oh, that's how he could be on a minecart for 20 years. Okay. But yeah, I mean, that's oh, bonkers. If you talk to your kids, you mean? Which yeah. neither of us do. Oh, right. I talk to them all the time because we're all pals. <laughs> Well, he does John, mention that he's a Zenithian. Good father. <laughs> he he says that he's a Zenithian, and if twenty years on that cart hasn't spoiled the old Aegon intuition, I'd say that's where you're headed. So he decides to join your party. He doesn't do anything in your party. He just joins it. Yeah. And you go through all these little cart uh, puzzles until finally you go through a uh, a. Uh, the weirdest. <laughs> I, I, would you say this is where it goes disc three crazy, Matthew? It's- I mean, I love this dungeon. The minecart puzzles are fun. And like one of them, you have to like go up one thing so that it'll flip and go down. Like yep. it's got like a physics puzzle. It's yep. weird. Right. But then you use a train to push you <laughs> into yeah, then you a get- void. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true uh you do ride a mine cart through 2001 a space odyssey uh with the giant baby head and everything uh you Sorry, expand baby. your consciousness or whatever uh or do you want the interstellar like you find out that the fifth dimension is love or whatever you know oh. so and that's just I, that that was pretty close to disc three crazy right or, yeah, or not yeah. Yet. This is pretty goddamn bonkers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you end up. You got a man. You've just gone through a minecart st- puzzle, ro- uh, like roller coaster fucking amusement park, and then with f- Ned along Flanders. with a man whose name is Doctor Aegon, <laughs> yeah. who is a fucking old timey bartender. <laughs> Hello, Gavna, Italy, Italy, Mister Flanders, and then they you got shot. Via roller coaster minecart by a train, space and time that's pushing you <laughs> by a steam train. Which where did steam trains come from? <laughs> I haven't seen any sort of technology like that in this game. Yeah, this is Final Fantasy VI. You would know it out. You would get that reference if you ever played that game, John. <laughs> so eventually, you go through this intergalactic. Uh, uh, planetary, planetary, intergalactic. Yeah, another dimension. <laughs> another, dimension. <laughs> another dimension. Another dimension. Another dimension. And so, uh, you end yeah. up in a watery castle that it seems to be underwater, but you're in like a pocket of air or something. Is that what yeah, that is? I could not make out what the hell that was. I yet. don't know. <laughs> it, I thought it was on. like ice at first. Yeah, me too. But uh, he says it's just like some parts are flooded and some parts aren't. That's- yeah, it looked like water to me. I think it's just you're in some sort of 
pocket of air under gotcha. the mm-hmm. okay. sea or whatever it is. And uh yeah, and- you can't go around you can't go to too many places here. It's all flooded and blocked by water, but you can go downstairs uh to a couple of pedestals, one of which has a golden orb on it, and one of which does not. And then Dr. Aegon freaks out. And you Whoa. get the flashback of a lifetime. Mm-hmm. The first thing you see is Zenithia in the sky get surrounded by uh, black fart clouds. <laughs> yeah. And it shits out. Yeah, this of- is a really great looking <laughs> scene, by the way. This game looks pretty good sometimes. Yeah. yeah. It shits out a golden ball. <laughs> <laughs> and the golden ball lands on top of up to 10 towers. And this is when the game goes black and white. Yeah, because it's um, a memory. Or is, I'd say black and pink. It's, it's not like a sepia, sepia tone. But it's you see your, your scene with Bianca. And she's like, oh, pretty ball. And she gives you the golden orb that fell from the sky. And then you see the scene with the older you. And he looks at the ball and gives it back to you. Mm-hmm. And then uh, you see Laja take it and break the ball. <laughs> Laja busts your ball. Yeah, and he's a real ball buster. You get to watch your father die again. Yeah. It is just as long as it was the first time. Oh, my God. It was so like the talky. full damn scene. <laughs> so then you come back and Dr. Aegon says, holy goddess, we're done diddly doodad for or doodahead for. Doodahead mm-hmm. for? I don't know what he's saying. It's weird. <laughs> and he realizes that the orb has been destroyed, but you know better, but you still have to go through all this shit anyway. <laughs> so he's like, well, the only people who made the orb are the fairies, so you have to go see the fairies. <sighs> so you take a useless detour. <sighs> I don't even know how you're supposed to find the fairies without a fact. Well, yeah, they say I that it's either. in a lake surrounded by mountains, and it's in the very center of the map with an, a desert arrow pointing at it. Yeah, oh. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I actually went there accidentally before, uh, I don't know, before one of these things that we had to do at the uh, beginning. So you, you get there by going east of Monstra Ferrato and using the magic carpet. You go through the Lost Woods from the Zelda games. And that leads you Yeah, but this time a fairy just like it's pretty funny. Like you come upon a campfire and your son starts talking to uh so uh, an invisible person. Yeah, and then he leads it's a fairy, you can't see him because you're an adult, I guess. Yeah. And you they lead you through the lost woods. Yes, because only children go back to fairy Lee. Or lay or shay or whatever the fuck it is. I went back and, and uh, got a, a secret fairy treasure. I don't remember what it does. Oh, uh, the foil? The fairy foil? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. It's this good sword for the girl. That's why I yeah. got it. So Treacle is excited to see you again. Uh, she says, Syrup of figs, Stan, it's been so many years. And mm-hmm. she tells you that you need to uh, go to see the queen, which is weird because I thought she was the queen, but no, Queen Me Caramel too. is the queen. So you need to see Queen Caramel and Treacle gives you a horn so that you can see the queen. Wait, so you can be a fairy or you can be a queen? <laughs> oh, the choice is wide open. <laughs> either way, you, to be either one of them, you got to be a little horny. <laughs> so, so she gives you this dumb horn and you have to go find this lake in the center of the map with an arrow pointing at it yeah it's just north of the to, Indian tower and you go to a lily pad and blow the horn you get to go out you get you go into like a forest and then there's a dock and you have to take i i like swim around this lake for a good long while <laughs> before I had the horn. Just wondering, like, trying to find the entrance to the place I was supposed to go, not realizing oh, that wait, I was in the yeah, wrong place. Oh, wait, yeah, that's the part oh, yeah, where I did the desert points to. It's not the forest. Yeah, the forest is kind of... I don't know how you would find that, because it's just like... Oh, yeah, you're oh. right. That's a good point. The forest is a fucking... Hit. It's, like, on another part of the map, and it's just a fucking dot. Oh, yeah. you guys were talking about the lake? Yeah, yeah the, lake the lake was easy, easy to find, because it's north of the Zenithian Tower, yeah. but... The how the fuck you'd find that forest? I don't even I know. I don't know. Maybe you can go there earlier. Uh, you could always have walked there. No, so you have to get the. You have to use the carpet to get there. Oh, you're right. Hmm. 
So guess uh, you're just supposed to have explored the map. Yeah, I guess don't so. you dare close your eyes. Oh no, no. <laughs> Hold your breath, it gets better. <laughs> I did that to myself. <laughs> so, so anyway, you take this raft out to the lily pad, you blow the horn, and a beautiful castle appears. And again, it all looks really nice. This game is pretty, on the Ooh. iPhone in particular. It looks good. It does. Yeah. It looks beautiful. Um, and there you speak with the queen and... She's super happy to see you and tells you that she cannot make another golden orb. They tried, but all they made was like a little bobble. And she gives it to you and says, go upstairs. Now, before you go upstairs, there is a person you can talk to. And they say that you are what's called a Loftinian. And Bianca is a Zenithian. And the legendary hero could only be born of a Loftinian and a Zenithian. Oh. Yeah. And they so. also say that the paintings upstairs show like aspects of your memory. There's a guy, a scholar downstairs talking about paintings. Right. And so they're sort of laying in. They don't really explain what happens here. It's kind of weird. I mean, you, they don't really need to because you, you go there. And here's the weird thing about this game, but I like it. When you're a kid and you see yourself from the future. Mm hmm. Yourself from the future talks to you. Yes. But when you're playing yourself from the future, the kid version of you talks. And those yes. are the only times that your character ever speaks. And it's wild. Just you only get one side of the conversation both times. Right. And so uh, as you did in, in the past, you ask to have a look at the bobble the child is carrying that he got from up to 10 towers. And uh, you swap it out sneakily. For the uh, the fake one and take the real gold orb. Did we talk about how you get to this? You have to go to like a painting. Yeah. Uh, in a room behind the fairy in the castle behind the fairy throne room is a Well, painting, it's actually upstairs. You have, to have an upstairs and behind it, whatever. Yeah. And you have to have a certain item in your main character's inventory. Is it the bobble? Yeah. I think it must be. You have to have the you have to have the 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 bobble. Well, I don't know no, why. The, you don't have the bobble because it's destroyed. You no, have no, to the have... bobble, not the orb. The bobble <laughs> is the fake one. The orb is the real one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So you have to have the bobble in your inventory, and you go. And this is actually, I thought it was neat. Um, Stan, you had a, something that you found interesting, and I, you know, I'll tell you, I found something interesting, and it was walking around the old town again, which I hadn't seen in yeah, a long time. I did it too. It was actually kind of surreal to me, which is weird for a video game, but for in a way, I did feel like, wow, like I felt for this character seeing his hometown again after all these years and all this terrible crap he's been through, and kind of did you go to Sancho's to house? People. Yep. Yeah, you can go talk to everybody, and they kind of say what they would have said back then. It's fun. But, but what, did you talk to I your dad? Notice is, yeah, the first time I did it, it wasn't to talk to myself as a kid. It was to talk to my dad. Yeah. You get, cause you try it twice. Cause I, I think the, you go to where your heart wants you to go. And the first time you try to save your dad, cause you go to him and you say, Hey, don't go to, uh, what's the name of the town? Lowry? No. Uh, what's the castle with Henry? Coburg. Coburg. Yeah. He's saying, don't go there and don't go to that ruins. And the dad's like, well, you do seem like I, I somehow trust what you're saying because your eyes seem very familiar. Yeah. Uh, I'll take that into consideration, but he still goes. Yeah. Um, but something tells me that you changed something and he probably survived. I mean, who knows? Hmm. Uh, but you've already seen this. It's what already are you guys happened. talking about? I didn't do any of this. You didn't go see Pancras? You walked around the entire no. town and you didn't go inside Sancho's house and talk to your dad? No, I was scared to go see my dead dad. Uh. Yeah, I talked to the dad because the, I couldn't even find myself as a kid. So I walked into the church and walked out and my and the kid was standing right there. So that's I walked I walked around the town and then I walked into the church and I walked out and the kid was standing right there. I talked to him and then I walked around the town for another minute and talked to people and then I left. No, I had two visits. The first one, the kid was gone. He was gone to the up to 10 towers and I could just what talk do you mean to him. had two visits. Really? I had two visits. Yeah. The That's first time weird. I went to talk to Pancras, the kid wasn't there. Sancho says the kid's out at the, at the tower and you can talk to Pancras and I warned Pancras. Did the game then what kick you out? Yeah, of the it kicked mirror? me out, and then I went again, and that time I found the kid. 
No, I only went one time. I talked to myself (laughs) and then I went and visited Sancho and my dad and I told him not to go. And he said, uh, I'll, he said, um, I suppose it wouldn't mind for me at least to, for me to, to at least bear your advice in mind. Um, and then you exit the, you exit the town and you exit the painting. Um, yeah, I had to walk out of the town to get out of it. Did you walk out of it both times, John? Yeah. Oh. I bet the first time you walked out, the kid was over there and you could have just gone and talked to him. Oh, probably. I think (laughs) you just fucked up. Oh, okay. That makes sense. (laughs) Uh, Then there's a cat that you can find that's not really a cat. He's a magician and he's studying the fairies. Um, Oh. Yeah. That's weird. I find that cat. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Queen Caramel um, tells you to go and, you know, get the orb back to the Zenithian castle, which you do. Dr. Aegon uh, says, well, if that doesn't put the willy in G. Willikers, you found mm-hmm. me an orb. Um, you hand him the orb and the sky in, in this in another cool scene where, like, the camera backs away from all five of you. Yeah. Uh, then these two lights shoot out from the orb and the castle, you know, shoots up out of the lake and you get a little rainbow. It's really pretty. Yeah, it's pretty. And, yeah, it's a cool cutscene here, kind of. Yeah. And, but it, the castle doesn't go as high as he was expecting and it essentially becomes, uh, an airship. Hey, uh, hey Stan, Stan. Yeah. Why are there so many games about rainbows? And what's on the other side? (laughs) Why are there so many Um, games about (laughs) Now, here's a question that I had. Uh, I can't seem to stop the tower without trying to land it. Like, it's always moving. Yeah, same here. Wait, what are you talking about? It's really annoying. When we move on the phone, when we fly in the castle, we can't make it stop. Oh, yeah. No, same, same with on the DS. That's okay, weird. so it just keeps going until you find yeah. a place to land. Yeah. That's super annoying. Yeah, it's super annoying. So you explore the castle, and God, I hate to be rushing through this because there's so many <laughs> things you can talk about, and it's interesting. But uh, so well, many the, things. Uh, the uh, angels are it's interesting. oddly muscular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the, all like uh, Doctor Aegon's like, oh hey, all the Zenithians, they were just like hiding, and now they're they've all come back. So you, the castle is full of burly angel men and angel women. Are they burly? Yeah. I thought yeah, they, they were they, just. They don't. I thought they, they were look just cheery to me. Oh, okay, they look beefy to me, but it's just <laughs> my interpretation. There's like a there's a chapel in here, so you can save. It's yeah. pretty handy. It's super and, handy. Uh, but can I you run across somebody that told me that Doctor Aegon was not a Zenithian? And, yeah. But then I went and talked to Doctor Aegon, and he just didn't have anything to say about it. Nope. Hmm. But then you find a room with an old man, and the old man. I actually found the grappling hook before I talked to the old man, but the old <laughs> man tells you to go get the grappling hook. Yeah, uh, I did too. But the most important Jeez. thing he says is. We need to bring about the resurrection of the Zenith Dragon, and everything Ooh. will be back on track. The powers of the Zenith Dragon are said to be sealed in a place called Talon Tower, on an island to the west of Helmanaptra. Mm-hmm. And so you have to go to an island west of Helmanaptra to visit the Talon Tower. And the flying uh, castle could only land in very specific spots, like a chunk of desert. Yeah, flat areas. Mm-hmm. So you go to this castle, and like I mentioned earlier, this is where the game gets really fucking hard, really fucking fast. Mm-hmm. That tower is super hard, and you get, at least on the DS, you get an encounter every, like, five seconds? Maybe? Yeah, <laughs> it felt like it. And one of them had this, like, orange dragon thing that wasn't really a dragon yeah and it would kill pretty much everyone in your party and gave you no xp when you killed it oh i found him like he had a spell that did like 60 damage but i i was well equipped and uh i killed him every time because you get yeah but i would have two of them i'd have to heal a whole lot afterwards but one time two of those things in a black dragon 
Yeah, you get a for- thousand gold for each one. So I was like, oh, I want to buy some items. So I, I kind of grinded this part for a while and just got money so I could get like cool stuff from the lofty peaks because that had really uh, good weapons and armor. Did any of them ever surprise you? Uh, yeah, but they even then they 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 didn't do that much damage. They like, killed had, two of my party's members on a surprise. They they were doing sixty to seventy damage each if they did those uh, fire breathing attacks or whatever. But uh, I had everyone had between two hundred fifty to three hundred hit points, so that was fine. Wow. I could survive. Whoa, that. wait, who's in your party? Uh, there's my main guy, and he had like two eighty, two ninety, and there was Sancho who has three hundred and something, and uh, the Good kids God. had over two hundred each. Well, how did you get your yeah, kids to have that you many must have, hit see that he, points? You grinded for a while. That's that's what we're talking. about. I don't about. run away from fights. <laughs> no, but I, I mean, I'm level twenty eight. My kids are twenty five. Yeah, they should be over two hundred hit points by now. I don't think so. Oh, well, mine are. I've also been giving them all the items, like the uh, uh, stat boosting items. Oh, uh, oh, okay. I didn't think That'll of that. That'll do it. Um, <laughs> wait, now the kids, right? The do you still have only the Zenithia equipment on the boy, or did you upgrade his sword? Uh, I haven't upgraded anything yet. So you've kept the Zenithian stuff on him. Yeah. Okay, because I was just been wondering if that was if if because like there are better swords than the Zenithian sword. Oh, I but, haven't found. I didn't go to Wheelbrook, so I haven't found those. Yet. Oh, but the Zenithian sword can do things. You can use the sword. You can use the shield. Oh, uh, interesting. As an item in the fights, and they, they become helpful. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think if you use the sword, it removes any magic buff that the enemy has. Ooh. Yeah. So it does have its uses. Okay. Um, and he won't do it much if you put it on fight wisely. You have to control him to get him to do that. Right. Right. Uh, so I, I did find this pretty hard, and at this point, my... DS was just starting to flake out and it was crashing every, every time I like moved it harshly or put it down, it would crash and lock. So I had to, to finish this dungeon, switch over to my 3DS, which I didn't want to do because if you blow up the game to fill the screens, it looks blurry and kind of gross, but it is Hmm. way easier to see since it's like twice the size on my 3DS XL. Uh, so I should have done that a while ago because it looks a lot better. That's funny. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we go to Dragon Tower, Talon Tower, Talon the Tower. Dragon Temple, and use you have the, to use the grappling hook. Yep. And there's treasure chests all over the place. Yep. And it's a pain in the ass of a dungeon. Let's talk about what happens at the end, or you know, let's talk about what happens. Okay. There's, so, oh, go ahead. Okay. There's two. Basically, you grapple. You have to climb to the top on the outside. Take grappling hook <laughs> down. There's two boss fights in there. Uh, one is, who was it against? Slon. Slon. What was Slon? Remember, you, yeah, Slon and, and Khan were the two guys who fought your dad in the beginning. So, so Slon, Slon is the, I thought it was Slon. Oh, Slon was the other one, right? With yeah, Lodge. Slon yeah. was the one who kind of looks like Rocksteady. Yeah. Or so Bebop, I don't know. So you beat up Slon, he was, he was easy-ish, he, that wasn't a super hard fight. Nah. And then Laja, everyone's favorite, we are, I just imagine it to be like Balki Bartokomis or like, uh-huh. um, who's the, the, the Russian comedian? You remember the Russian comedian who was like, in, in communist Russia, hamburger, oh. eat you. I, you know who I think he's supposed to be? And I mentioned this, I think, in the Yakov first Smirnoff. episode. Yakov yeah, Smirnoff. Yakov Smirnoff. yeah, that was killing me. But the one he reminds me of is Peter McNichol in Ghostbusters 2, where he plays right. Dr. Yeah, you did Janosch. That. Janosch. Yes. Uh, because he, he does that whole weird sentence structure thing. Yeah. And it's super fun to read. Do you have any examples of this, Stan? Of course I do. Yay! <laughs> um, let me go back to it. Oh, God. My screens are all a mess. So yeah, when he when he asks you, uh, he's first time he, when he shows up, he goes, I was aware that you will come when I am awaiting here long enough. You are remembering me? Did you say yes or no? I would say yes, of course. I don't yeah. know what he said if you said yes. 
Because if you oh. say no, he goes, what? <laughs> not that I am caring if you do not. He says do the not. same thing. Okay. <laughs> no, all that matters now is that your strength is put to a test. And then you beat him. And he goes, I see you have grown somewhat stronger than the last time we are meeting. Hmm? Why the surprise? Oh. You think you can truly ruin me with such performance, little one? What? <laughs> I am not such foolish that I am fighting here until you become strong enough to destroy me. Nonetheless, I am realizing I should have taken your life at the same time I took, I turned Pancras to ashes. Mm-hmm. It is surprising to me that you remain with the breath after I, the great Lodger, and with you fighting. <laughs> I'm you don't know from joke. He never <laughs> did. He's no Jane Rivers. <laughs> I must reporting to Grandmaster Nimzo immediately. But per- first, perhaps, a small recreation. Huh? <laughs> I'm wondering what the small recreation is. I assumed he did drugs. Like he <laughs> rolled up marijuana into a cigarette. Oh, uh, you think he started just snorting some lines immediately after? Yeah. Yeah. I love Laja. I kind of hope he wins. <laughs> yeah. He's pretty great. Yeah. So uh, that, that fight, though, took uh-huh. me like 20 minutes. That Did fight it? is hard. Yeah. I was doing, I was not doing very much damage against him. I, uh, I think I did pretty well. I, I just threw it on fight wisely for the rest of oh. them. And yeah, was able to beat him pretty, uh, Hmm. Pretty handily. One thing that I like with fight wisely that you can't do if you're fighting yourself is if someone gets injured before their turn and someone else will automatically heal that person, which is something yes. you can't do if yes. you are controlling the character. Targeted healing. It's so good. Yeah. You oh, wait, say no. that again. What happens? So like if someone – say you, you – so you've set up all your moves. The turn starts. Uh-huh. If someone's on fight wisely and in the middle of that one turn – someone in your party gets injured, they will heal that person. Normally that would take you another turn to like select to heal that person. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's I'll be using great. that from now on. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, do you turn all four of them on fight wisely? No, you have to no, control you can't your put yourself dude. on. Yeah. yeah. Be great if you could. Yeah. Um, so what Laja and Klon, whatever his name is, I already forgot. Um, Slon. Slon were hiding was uh, the eyes of the dragon that go into the statue. So you take the eyes of the dragon, you go back up to the midway, uh, up the Meet. tower. You, you run into Randall Flagg, and he's like, yeah. <laughs> he, I wonder how many people in uh, the audience have read Eyes of the Dragon. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Da, 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 da. Da. That's the eye da, of the tiger. Da, da. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you put the eyes of the dragon in. Its mouth opens up and you go into the mouth. You can get the dragon staff and then you go in and you get the dragon orb. And the dragon orb does this little cool swirly thing, I think. Mm-hmm. So you go back to Zenithia and the Zenithians are pissed off uh, because... They found a Fator hath been hiding among us. I don't know what a Fator. I, I guess they can't say traitor, or maybe it's a traitor to faith. I don't know what a Fator is, guys. I don't know. But yeah, they're real upset that someone who is not a Zenithian is there. And do they mean Ned Flanders? They mean Dr. Aegon. They say, who art thou and wherefore art thou here? And I'm actually really happy that they use the correct use of wherefore. Yeah. Um, And then they say, you're not a Zenithian. We've never had a Zenithian named Dr. Aegon. We never had a Zenithian wear bartender outfit. (laughs) (laughs) He definitely has like a sweet mustache. He's not a Zenithian. And in my mind, he's kind of stroking it with two fingers and just kind of. But he's a good guy. He's not a bad <laughs> yeah. guy. When he asks to see your orb, did you say yes or no? I said yeah. I'm like, oh sure, you're you're my friend. You're Paul F. Tompkins. I like spontaneous nation. I said <laughs> no, and when you say no, he says, "I see." Well, what if I said I was going to take it by force? And then oh. he says. No, I suppose a thin slip of a man would be squashed like a slime by a fighting force like you. 
I guess I'll just have to give up on old Orby. (laughs) (laughs) So then you talk to him again and you just hand the dragon orb to him. Yeah. And that's when Dr. Aegon does something I would have never guessed. (gasps) It was shocking. What? He becomes a dragon. A dragon? A dragon. Get it, Dr. Guys, it's, Aegon. It's not that surprising. He got to, he turned into a dragon. Dragon. <laughs> dragon. He, dragon he's a quest. dragon. He gives you the quest. He's the dragon, Dr. Aegon. Oh my god, it all comes together. Mm-hmm. And he's a pretty gray white dragon with blue eyes. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually not convinced that his eyes. name in the game is Dr. Aegon, because I look thinking about it, I don't remember they're seeing a period after the DR. I think maybe he just says that his name is like Dur Aegon. <laughs> well, I mean, it also says like whenever My you buddy killed Dur. <laughs> uh when you killed all the enemies, it 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 screws up the grammar there. Um so <laughs> anyway. He says he's the Zenith Dragon, master and commander of all that comes to pass in the realm. Um, he welcomes it you. It seems weird that he's dressed like fucking an old barbershop quartet dude. Yeah. And making me run around and do shit. And he go talk to the fucking fairies and shit. Are you kidding me? Yeah, but n- now you know the gates to Nadiria have been forced asunder, and the Grand Master of the Underworld endeavors to ascend into the human world. This is but, an Avenged Sevenfold song, right? Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> you alone may be able to check this wretched evil, and I shall do everything in my power to assist you. And then and he you hands you the orb to Dr. Egan and he transforms <laughs> into a mighty dragon. <laughs> That's what you receive. <laughs> the Zenithian Tintinabulum. A Tintinabulum? The Rin Tintinabulum. That's a real word. I know that. It must be because it must mean some kind of bell. Because when he says, then he says after that, he goes, whenever. You require my assistance. You can ring my bell. bell. Ring my bell. (laughs) Ring my bell. Yes. So you just ring your bell and you've got a dragon to fly on. So now you can either fly on a castle with all the amenities or you can fly on a dragon and look cool. Hmm. I think I would rather fly on a dragon than a stupid old castle that can't stop anywhere. It's a tough one. Mm. Uh, listeners, what would you rather fly on? A castle or a dragon? Please let us know in the Facebook group. What about a castle on top of a dragon that no, looks like No, that is like not a- an option, Stanthony. Uh, wait, Can my dragon be made out of castle? It'd no. be a castle on the head of a dragon, but the dragon mm. looks like a whale, and it's called Which Sid. is to say... Can my castle, can my dragon be made out of Nathan Fillion? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, how do you know that Nathan Fillion isn't Dr. Aegon? Ooh, it could be. He kind of looks like it. Eh, he's not that good of an actor. This was way outside of his wheelhouse. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's oh, it. God. Sick burn. That's it for this week's confessional. John, where are we playing to next time? We're playing. Until the end of Dragon Quest V. Oh. Are we finishing this game in like four days? Shit. Finishing this game <sighs> in like four days. I got a feeling this chunker will not be anything. Like, it, we'll just finish it, and that's that. I mean, I guess there's some side quests, but I don't think I'm going to fight that thing again. You could. Yeah, I've got no interest in any of that crap. Well, uh, before we go, John, we have a couple more segments we like to do. The first one is the Bullshit Minigame Corner. John's Bullshit Minigame Corner. John, you want to talk about some Bullshit Minigames? Well, let's talk about one. I promised let's last time that I would baby. try. Let's talk about you. <laughs> uh, slime Racing. Oh, yeah. A.K.A. The, the White Pony. And I'm here to tell let's you that it's the greatest sex. drug no. ever let's created. Slime sex. Racing. And now, I tried it before. They're like, oh, your slime has to be level 20. 
Well, first they said, you don't have a slime in your party. Then I brought my slime back. They're like, your slime is too inexperienced. It has to be level 20. Hmm. So then I grinded up my slime. And you know, then I you went grinded back up your slime and you made them experienced. I went back to the, uh, the, the races. Sounds sexy. Now, I had – my party was – me, the two kids, and the slime. But when I walked into town, they replaced the slime with Sancho because he's a human character who could comment on things. So yeah. when I went up to talk to the Coliseum, they're like, "Oh, sorry, you need. Uh, there's no slime in your party. You can't. You can't race." Right. So I had to go to the castle, talk to Patty, tell Sancho to leave my party, go back to, <laughs> and this isn't a place you can warp to. I have to go back to Lodestar Harbor, take the boat, go back over there, <laughs> go to the town, and then finally, finally, I can enter my slime in. And the guy's like, well, do you want to bet on this race? And I said, yes. And he's like, oh, sorry, you don't have any tokens. Then I punched <laughs> him in his stupid face, but he, he let me race anyway. And uh, this might be the crappiest mini game. No, no, yes. the, uh, the Tombola is still the crappiest mini game. But this might be the third crappiest mini game in the game. It this is mini game awful. is trash. It is trash. You just what? Uh, first of all, my slime would never win ever, ever, ever. I don't know if his stats weren't good enough or what. He just kept falling and flailing and falling asleep. <laughs> Last place every time. I wow. Know, and I had to give money every time I tried. So screw that mini game. It was garbage and not worth the like hour of effort it took to get it started. Yeah. I, wow. Hot take from John. It's no. the first time he's ever like hated on a mini game no, like this. No, I had the same problem with Rogue Galaxy where trying to get five insects was impossible because you had to go back in time before the bugs ran away. Ugh. So. Ugh. Did you go to the TNT board over in uh, Ferry Lee? I haven't. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, there's a monster Surprise sized. Surprise, any good? It's, it's huge. And no, it sucked so bad. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because there's this one spot in it that if you don't get the exact right number, you just keep going back and forth. And it's not the finish because that's how it normally is with the finish. This is like the halfway point. Oh, so wow. you could just waste all your rolls right there. And <laughs> there was this option to go into the dungeon, which would just waste more rolls. Oh, God. Why did I do that? Why did I spend an hour doing that? Did you win it? <laughs> no, but I spent an hour doing that. Oh, boy. <laughs> Well, maybe I'll try it. You know, I'm actually good at video games, guys, so Ooh, I can no, probably get it done. This requires so, no skill. Uh, speaking of being good at video games, let's talk about what we are squarely against. That was not a good segue, guys, but I'm going to roll with it. Anthony, Stephen, Dr. Stone, <laughs> what are you squarely against? I'm going to say I am roundly for uh, all the fun cutscenes we had in this game. As much as I dug on uh, a, a, the JRPG thing, one thing I really love about these old JRPGs and these little super deformed characters and these sprites is that it's just kind of adorable. Uh, the story, it's just silly and fun. And just trying to make you laugh. And I like that as opposed to the more, um, like serious, uh, tones that they try to take, uh, especially with, with the, the Tetsu- Tetsuya Nomura Final Fantasies. Um, mm-hmm. it's like, I don't, I don't like that brooding hero thing. I like the more happy go lucky, silly stuff. So really, uh, I really like the tone of this game. I really like the silliness and it's just sheer desire to entertain. And it does that a lot, and especially in this chunker. It was almost all cutscenes. Mm-hmm. And so John, yeah. what are you who me squarely against? 
I am uh, roundly four going back in time. I thought that was a really fun little sequence and very charming uh, and brings a lot of depth. And uh, I don't know. I really like this game. I like the characters. Even when I was getting super frustrated with the game yesterday with its grindy, awful dragon tower dungeon. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I've been really enjoying the experience. It's never it's never been like Rogue Galaxy. This is dreary and I hate it. Uh, although I was really angry last night because my day ass kept scratching and I had to do the <laughs> last dungeon a bunch of times. But uh, yeah, you seem to lighten up a lot as soon as you finished. Yeah, I was really, really, really mad. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember. <laughs> oh man! So Matthew, what are uh, you squarely against? Well, as for me, uh, something that I was ah, you'll see. <laughs> Uh, thought about what the fuck? Uh, something that I thought about while I was playing the game today. Uh, I'm rallying for the music in this game. I think John has complained about it a lot because he's a monster, but it's really great. Um, I like the music a lot, and other than the forced musical stings that can be very you know frustrating, but that's just that's gameplay, not music. Um, I think the music's great, and I like listening to it. And uh, what are you playing yeah. it through? Headphones or the, just the speaker on your iPhone? Usually headphones, yeah. Yeah, I mentioned this also in the first episode when John said he didn't like the music. I think it sounds a lot better coming through headphones or off a better speaker than yeah. the DS speaker. Oh, did you ever mm-hmm. try it with headphones, John? No, I'm listening to podcasts while I'm playing this game. Oh, shame yeah, on you. Yeah, I mean, there's no, there's no voice actor or anything. It's It's a bit... Yeah, but sometimes you know, the music changes it. or you get a cut scene or something like that. I'll turn like, it on this, when yeah. something special is happening. Yeah, like there's this music that plays that's like super dramatic um, when dramatic things happen and the funniest time it's used. I think it's – I call it the soap opera music is when you visit Sancho uh, like after you showed up to Gotha, he goes – he apologizes to you uh, and about losing Pankraz and it just – that – Super dramatic, mel- you know, uh, that melodramatic soap opera music pops on, and I just laugh my ass off. It's so good. <laughs> well, uh, that is it for our squarely against section, and I think we have a couple of letters to read. Wow! For some reason, it's a lot of letters. Uh, John, why don't you do some letter reading? All right, here is a letter. Hey, Square Roots folks, just wanted to email y'all because your podcast has been awesome and got me through peak season at my job, and you deserve to suffer through reading emails instead of ending the show and going to sleep. Uh, I've listened to... My butt hurts from sitting in this (laughs) chair, so... (laughs) Almost all the free episodes, definitely subscribing after Rent. It's the best podcast to listen to at work. I'm planning on playing Dragon Quest V along with a podcast, but I haven't found time to play Pascaline the Flute in Elf Country... There are no elves, because all my free time is going to Persona 5 right now. And there are no elves in this game. No, that's weird. Berries. Persona 5 is wonderful, though. So, Are there elves uh, in Persona 5? I have a yeah, feeling definitely. I will play Persona 5 in 2027 when it becomes available <laughs> on the podcast. Uh, I was wondering if y'all had thought at all about doing a Square Roots versus or anything like that for Barkley. Shut up and jam Gaiden or any other indie PC RPGs. I hadn't thought about that. Wait, but that is, is that a great thing? idea. And Barkley I've already put it on our potential list of ones for this coming month. Because uh, if you go, well, it's too late now. But in our Facebook, uh, it will be this coming month. It is this month, January. Yeah, this month. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, on our Facebook group, I've asked people to nominate, and then on our Patreon, we will get people to vote on which one we are going to play, and that will be on the list because it's really I've played that a bit, and it's super fun. Huh. Uh, also, I watched Ghost Ship for the first time since I was a traumatized ten year old at a sleepover, and it was great. That opening is something else. I saw that movie on a date. Oh, that's an interesting date movie. Weird. Yeah. Have you seen the opening to that or just seen the movie, Matt? I've, no, I haven't. You can watch the opening oh, wow. on YouTube. It is yeah. worth watching. It is pretty fun. It Even is before a wild you get to set Juliana Margulies. <laughs> Cheers. Gage La Charité. Thank you, Gage. Thank you, Gage. You're uh, just the best. Yeah. And we love you. Mm-hmm. 
Um, hello, all. So earlier in this series, there are some comparisons made between Dragon Quest V and Pokemon. Pokemon. Would you consider the choosing of the three bar- brides to be the basis of choosing your starter in the Pokemon series? Thank you, Ryan. Now, this is our nemesis, Ryan, that likes to write in. And as you can see, he has lay- carefully laid a trap for us here because mm-hmm. there is no good answer to this question. Mm. Well, the I mean, question itself begs the question: Are women like pets? Wow. <laughs> oh wait, so the starter is the Pokemon? Is that what they're talking about? Yeah, that's like yeah. you can choose your starter if you get like Pokemon Red or Blue, and then it's like I want Eevee, I want Charizard. Uh, Every game has three different starters that you can choose from. Gotcha. Squirtle. I would say when did Dragon Quest Five came out? Like the early nineties. So probably not. Well, this did come out before Dragon. No, it did come Pokemon. out before Pokemon. But I, you know, Pokemon the card game came out a few years after. Uh, I, I don't think so because just choosing something was something you could do in a lot of different games. Well, he's just saying, <laughs> is it is it the same thing? And no, because you're choosing your bride like two thirds of the way through the game. Yeah, with Pokemon, you're choosing your starter. And it's not like you're, you're collecting monsters, but you're not collecting brides. I don't, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're not marrying your Pokemon. You do kind you of could. collect family in this game, like you collect Pokemon and Pokemon. It's true. Yeah. And you do collect monsters, like you collect Pokemon and Pokemon. I, yeah. yeah. I guess, I guess there's that, but I think that's just kind of a building your, your soldiers or whatever. I don't know. It's an RPG mm. thing. I, I don't understand that, the I always, question. I always figured that Pokemon was kind of an RPG light. Yeah, it's like a, a beginner's RPG. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So, and I think Steven had a PS that said something along the lines of, I'm not sorry about the mistake I made, Steven. That's your name now. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Was was that in there? <laughs> yeah, it said, yep. hey, Steven, dummy, you're Steven <laughs> now. Sincerely, Ryan. Um, but he wrote that. He didn't realize when he wrote that that uh, we had already changed your name to Dr. Stone. Yes, yeah. so. Dr. Stone. I am Dr. Dr. Stone. Stonely. Dr. Stonely. All right. And now it's time for Stan. Oh, sorry. Dr. Stone's TSMR <laughs> ASMR corner. So in an ASMR manner, please tell us about your TSMR podcast. You're going to want to listen to the new TSMR campaign run by our GM Hayden, where I play Night Boy. It's really good. And I think you'll get some enjoyment out of it as we go around battling people as teen superheroes. Thank What's you. that? What does TSMR stand for? It stands Stan? for they see me rolling because that's what they're seeing me do. And Roll. they drop the G. Yeah, we drop the G. There's no ng in <laughs> rolling. It's, it's just the, rolling. Just smooth just rolling. Seeing, and they're seeing me do it. I can't. I can't get out of there. They just, I'm always in their line of sight. They see me rolling. Ooh. <laughs> they hating, patrolling, trying to catch me riding dirty. All right. Well, thank you, Stan, for being our continued guest host. Oh. You have sent Matthew yeah, thanks, to Dreamland. Jim. Oh, he's awake again. <laughs> <laughs> My butt hurts. Uh. I decided to sit in a different chair. And it is not good for sitting in for two hours. Well, we are on Matthew's favorite part. So let's do this Patreon part. thing. Let's do it. I think it's I think it's Matthew's turn. Oh man! Uh, hey, listeners! Uh, before we go, we're gonna plug our Patreon. Well, you should totally be a subscriber. You get all sorts of great benefits, like voting on games for future episodes, and At the five dollar sp- level. Yep, wheat. Uh, sweet bonus content like Square Roots Versus and Square Roots Instant Classic. We got a new Instant Classic! It's pretty great, and we just released uh, Instant Classic on the game God of War with me and Jim and John and Stephen Stone here. Dr. Stephen Stone, excuse me. (laughs) Dr. Stephen Stone, yeah. Uh, And uh, (laughs) it was great, so go listen to that. It's very very spoiler-heavy, of course, but anyway... Uh, we've got another great one lined up for January. We're working out the specific game that we're going to play right now. That'll be a Square Roots Versus. Uh, and there's some other stuff coming down the pipeline. So keep on, you know, sending money to us. We love you. 
And uh, as always, part of the gig, part of the gig, part of the deal is if you are a patron, read your name in this giant list at the end of the episode. And I think this week it's going to have to be read by John. Ah, damn it. Oh, (laughs) man. What a misdirect. (laughs) Bonjour, Andrew. F H G Q W Dick I O L at D F number sign dollar sign P T S. Really threw a monkey wrench in our fucking list there, Andrew. Right How are at the you top. Doing? Thanks, buddy. A deep of love. Oh, it is Ashley T. Bienvenue. Uh, Benjamin Afner. Come in, come in. Benzina Benzoni. You are expected. Oh, Bobby Midkiff. Uh, it is nice to see you. Uh, Brady A. Berman. Uh, how's you doing? Uh, Brigade. Uh, you like the cheese. La fromage, if you will. Uh, Brian Pitt. Uh, you are not pitiful. You are perfect. Uh, uh, Brian Stone, like Dr. Stone, yes. Uh, Brody Toy, uh, come and jouer, on the uh, Cameron Show, uh, ça va bien? It is good uh, here. Uh, Kiva Mossert, it's nice to see you. Cyril the Wolf, uh, David Green, uh, David uh, Shook, Devin Sloan, uh, bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. Uh, Eric Garbet, salut. Florian Jonas Kramer. Comment allez-vous? Uh, Gage la charité. It is nice to see you, monsieur. George Ambrouster. J'espère que tout va bien. Go Cry Wolf. Uh, it's nice to see you too. Aru. Uh, Gregory. Puis aussi, Axley Iguana. Axley. Bonjour, Axley. Uh, Jake Dickerson. Uh, ça va bien? Uh, Puis aussi, il y a uh, James Ostetler. Et aussi, James Platt. Jonathan Ellsworth, Jonathan Lee, Joseph et Rogers, Josh Anderson, Julia Zanella, Julian Titus, Justine Benoit, ah, c'est un bon nom québécois, Justine M. La mère de Vanessa, Lord Pamelstein, Megan Sullivan, Miguel Torres, Moth 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 Mandalorian Marmalade, Makes Mass Money, Ah, Nathan Poirot, He solves the mysteries with his petite moustache, uh, his, his, his little gray cells. <laughs> Nick. Oh, and Mabel. Oh, Patrick Couvert. Uh, it's well, the Lord of Binterongs. Uh, Patrick W. Bells, uh, bonjour. Uh, Andy Ous, en français. Uh, PJ Enns, uh, salut PJ. Race Jenkins, uh, POC, uh, Randy Pierce, bonjour, bonjour, Resti Kamata, salut, Robert M. Pullum, allo, Robert T. Russ Hartley, salut, Ryan Miller, bienvenue, Sam Harrison, c'est sensationnel, uh, Sammy Mitchell, c'est fantastique, Sean Walsh, c'est merveilleux, Stu Skill, magnifique, uh, Tom, salut, Tom. Tracy Tanoff, Terry Thick, oh, Tyler Petty, and Petit Tyler Petty, uh, Vanessa's mom, but this is not the real Vanessa's mom, this is the <laughs> fake Vanessa's mom, uh, Wilt Childress, salut, Wonder Swan, bonjour, Wonder Swan. ex Avia Krieger, salut, et, en finale, Zachary Davis, avec son chanson numéro un, le plus sacré bleu. Nicely done, Bonjour. John. <laughs> Jean Brandon, je ne sais pas qui est mon père. Ladies and gentlemen, send us an email. <laughs> Our email address is squarerootspodcast at gmail.com. If you want us to read it and comment upon it, we will do so. Uh, if you don't want to send us an email, you can just talk to us on Facebook. Our Facebook group is called the, Face- the Square Roots Podcast Group for Smart cool very attractive people yes we do have a facebook page no we don't really update it yes <laughs> as we <laughs> told uh, mr marble <laughs> don't go there go to the group <laughs> we need to delete that why is it still up anyway and of course you can tweet us at square roots pod thanks to subversive asset and mohawk gamer for their cover of toward the horizon the dragon quest 5 world map theme check out mohawk gamer and subversive asset on youtube links for both in the show notes. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes where you listen to podcasts and screenshot that review. Just screenshot it up and just send it to us on, on email or Twitter or Facebook and then be like, hey, level me up. And I totally will. Ooh. I totally will. Level me up, baby. That's it. 
Let's roll out of here. Transformers, transform and roll out. Roll out. For the Square Roots Podcast, I'm Matthew Van Zant. I am John Brandon. And I'm Dr. Stephen Stone. <laughs> oh, Dr. Stephen Stone. Bye. Stand. Wouldn't want to be a third. Are we ready to reveal that none of us know what the hell Vanessa is talking about in her recaps at the beginning of each episode? Okay, first, this is like the fourth time you've mentioned it, and no, no, we are not. <laughs> <laughs> is it the fourth time I've mentioned it? Do I mention this every time? Yes. That's funny. So, isn't this only like our third episode? <laughs> Well, no, this is our fifth episode, but... Are uh, you suggesting that I went like went back in time and I somehow incepted it into the past? No. Yeah. A- and. No. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> That's fair. Fair enough. All right. <laughs>